Hello everyone and welcome to our 3.5b lesson on equations of a line in point slope form. So yesterday 3.5a was slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. That is something y'all are all very familiar with. Today we're doing point slope form and so point slope form is just written a little bit different. Um, this is going to give you two things. Y'all it's going to give you a point on the line, any point on the line. And then it's going to give you the slope of that line because what does it take to create a line? It takes a point and then from there to get that second point, you just need a slope. And so this is written in point slope form. And here is what this form is. It is going to be y, that's part of the formula, minus y1, so you're going to plug that in, equals your slope, which is still going to be m, times parentheses, x minus, and then you're going to plug in your x1. So notice that the minus sign is a part of the formula. There is a minus sign in front of the y1. There is a minus sign in front of the x1. So my point is the x1 comma y1. My slope is going to be the second thing. The slope is this. The point is this. So there's my point. There's my x1, y1 point. And then here is my slope. I'm going to plug in just like normal. So my slope is the M. That's the second thing it gives you. It gives you the slope. So point slope form, you plug in your slope, you plug in your point, and this is what it looks like. So close to Y equals MX plus B, um, but we have a point attached to um, the X and the Y, and there is no Y intercept on there necessarily. So M is always going to be your slope. And then that x1, y1 pair is going to be the point on the line. So any point on the line. Okay, so we're going to practice writing that a few times in class. The more you write it, the easier it gets. But I do want you to pay attention to the fact that there's a minus sign in front of the x1 and in front of the y1, which means it's going to flip the sign of your original or your OG x1 and y1. So it says list a point on the graph and the slope of the graph, then write it in point slope form. Okay, so let's look at this first one. Just like yesterday, you're going to have to be able to find the slope of a line. So remember, to find the slope of a line, you choose any two points, and you count the um, rise over run. Okay, so this one, we uh, go down one, so that's going to be negative one, and then right one, two, three, four. Um, so I do expect that to be a negative slope. Negative one-fourth is my slope. Um, that is a negatively sloped line. Now let's pick any point on the line. Y'all, you can use either of these that are listed. You could also find ones on there. Um, that are not even marked. So like this is a point on the line. This is another point on the line. So let's just pick a random point on the line. Um, let's pick this one right here. We could use either. Um, that's the beauty of point slope is you can use any point. It doesn't have to be a specific point like the y-intercept does. So I could use this y-intercept that's listed or I could use the other one. So this is gonna be the point one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So this is the point four, three, okay? So I could do this with the point four, three. I could also do this with the point zero, one, two, three, four. I could use the y-intercept if I wanted to. Both equations will be correct. So what is my equation? Remember, it's gonna be y minus my y1, I'm gonna plug in, equals your slope, which is m, times x minus your x1. So we're gonna go uh, label those and plug them in. The hardest part is doing this at the beginning. It's supposed to feel a little bit uncomfortable at the beginning. So here is my x1, here is my y1, and then there's my slope, my m. So my equation is going to be y minus, well, what's my y1? My y1 is 3, so when I plug that in, it looks like it's a negative now. So y minus 3 equals my slope, which is negative 1 fourth, times x minus my x1, which is 4. So x minus, because it's part of the formula, 4. And that is the equation of the line. That is an equation written in point slope form. We could also use a different point if we wanted to. If we wanted to use the point 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Is that 4? 1, 2, 3, 4. We could also use the point 0, 4. If we did that, here's how it would look. It would just be y minus our y1 then would be 4 equals m. So my slope is still the same, negative 1 fourth times x minus 0. Um, and then you could just change that to an X if you wanted to. If you were to use the distributive property, I'm going to show you all this in class. If you were to use the distributive property, you would, um, and turn this into slope intercept form, you would get the same thing. Okay. Each of these would be 
um, the same equation in slope-intercept form. So I will show you all that in class just to um, prove to you that it's true. But point-slope form to me is a little bit easier than slope-intercept form because you can use any point in the line. And we, we'll talk about this in class, but sometimes the y-intercept is not a very pretty number. Um, sometimes it's crossing at a spot where it's hard to tell what it is, or it might be a huge number or a really small number that doesn't fit on your graph. So that's why I like point slope form. Okay. So what is my slope on this next one? Again, let's just count our rise over our run. So here's our two points. One, two, we rise three. What is our run? We run one to the right. So that's three over one positive slope. Um, what is a point on the line? So I'm just going to randomly choose this one. I'll probably have half the class choose this one and half the class choose the other, and we'll see if it's the same. So what is that point? One, two, three. This is the point three, one. Okay, so there's my x1, y1, and then there's my slope. So here's my equation. y minus y1 is 1 equals my slope, which is 3 over 1. You can write it as 3 over 1 or just 3, either way. Um, usually they'll just write it as 3, but I'm just showing you that's the same, times x minus my x1, which is 3. So if you are doing this at home and you're not part of the uh, class, if you're not there, um, then the other thing you could do, so there's one of my equations. Um, another thing I could have done is I could have used the other point. So what was the other point? The other point was 2, negative 3. So I could have done the same thing with the point 2, negative 3. And I would have gotten y minus, oh, this is interesting, y minus a negative 3. Well, when you plug that in, that becomes y minus negative 3. What does that turn into? That becomes y plus 3 equals my slope, which is 3 over 1, times x minus, um, that'd be minus 2. Okay, so interesting thing pops up when that happens, so we'll discuss that in class. So either of these would be totally acceptable, and there's also other points in that line. But notice the slope is going to stay the same every time. The only thing that's changing is the point on the line. All right, what is my slope on this next problem? 1, 2, 3 is my rise. My run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what is 3 over 6 reduced to? You could use your calculator if you needed to, but you all know that that's 1 half. So my slope is a positive 1 half, which means it's the same thing as going up 1, right 2. You can verify that there, up 1, right 2. Um, so there's my slope. Let's pick a point. I'm just going to randomly pick a point on this line. Um, I'm going to use this one. This is the point 1, negative 1. Um, I like that that, sorry, that's positive 1, negative 1. I like that that has one positive and one negative. That's why I'm going to use that one. So this is going to be my x1, this is my y1. And so when I go to plug this into point slope form, we do y minus and then we throw in our y1. Well, what's that gonna become? That's gonna become minus a negative one. What happens when you do minus a negative? That's the same thing as y plus one. So it flips that sign. Equals my slope, which is one half. There's my ratio of slope. Times x minus your x1, which is just going to be one. So there is an uh, equation of that line in point slope form. Again, you could use any point, so that all that's changing every time is the point. All right, now it says write the equation of the line in point slope form, and instead of having to pick out your point in your slope, they give it to you. So this just gives you practice. There's my x1, there's my y1, and then there's my slope. So I'm gonna go two over one. So that's gonna be y minus, what's my y1? One, one equals my m, which is 2 over 1 or just 2, write it either way. Um, they're going to simplify it to just 2, times x minus, what is my x1? That is going to be 4. And so this is the equation of that um, particular line going through that point with that slope. All right, this one gives me a slope of negative 3, and it passes through this point instead. Here's my x1, here's my y1. I like this question because it gives you two negatives. So it's going to be y minus, what's my y1? Well, that's going to turn into positive 5, when you do minus a negative, that turns into a positive, equals my slope, which is negative 3. Again, you can write that as negative 3 or negative 3 over 1. I'll accept both. Um, textbooks are going to simplify that to negative 3. I like to write the 1 because it helps me remember to run 1. And that's going to be x minus um, negative 1, so that's going to turn into a positive 1. So that turns into a positive 1 when you plug it into the formula. And then there is my equation in point slip form, going through the point negative 1, negative 5, and then having a slope of negative three. All right, now it does say in the directions, um, it says write the equation of the line in point slope form, um, but it doesn't give me the slope here, so I'm gonna have to find the slope. So I'm gonna use the first one as the point, so I'm gonna use this as my x1, y1, but we're gonna have to use our x2, y2 in order to find the slope, 
Okay, so I'm just labeling those. So how do you find slope? Well, slope is rise over run. What did I just write, y'all? Here we go. Boom. This is my x1, y1, and then my x2, y2. Okay, so whenever I go to find the slope of that line, I'm going to do y2 minus y1. So that's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or you could reverse that if you wanted to, as long as you're consistent. So rise over run. So we're just going to plug those into the formula. Okay, so let's find our slope. That is going to be negative 1 minus 7 over x2 is 1 minus a negative 3. So that turns into a plus 3. So that is negative 8 over 4. So my slope is negative 2. I have found my slope. It's negative 2. So now let's use our, we can use either point. I'm going to use x1, y1 just because it's already labeled as such. I'm going to go y minus 7 equals my slope, which is negative 2 or negative 2 over 1, either way, times x minus a negative 3. So it's going to turn into a plus 3. And that is the equation going through that first point. I could also swap that out to be the 1, negative 1 point if I wanted to. And again, those would be the same line. Same thing here, here's my x1, here's my y1. Actually label it right this time. Here's my x2, here's my y2. So when I find that slope, it's gonna be y2 minus y1, negative six minus a negative one turns into a plus one over zero minus two. So that's gonna be negative five over um, negative two. So that's going to be a positive five half slope. It turns into a positive five half slope. And so now I'm just gonna use this first point. You could use either point. So y minus a negative one will turn into a positive one equals my slope, which is five halves times x minus negative, uh, minus two. Uh, so that's going to be x minus two. You could again interchange that for the point zero, negative six. If you wanted the slope would stay the same and you would just change your x two to zero and your y two to a negative six. All right. Now they give you the equation of the line. It says graph the lines and write the equation if necessary. So this is already in slope inter or, I'm sorry, point slope form. So here is my slope, and then here's the point. The x is right next to the um, x1 is right next to the x, the y1 is right next to this. But you do need to remember that these signs have to be flipped when you take it out of the equation. So if it's negative two in the equation, that must mean that the number that they originally plugged in was a positive two. So what's the point on the line? It's gonna be positive two, positive one. So that point is actually going to be right here. What is my slope? My slope, you can see they've, redu they've um, simplified it to two, but we know that that's two over one. What I see people do all the time is they just go up two and they forget to go right one. So put it over one, up two and right one. And then I'm just going to put a line through that connecting those. And that is going to be the graph of this line that goes through this point and has a slope of two over one. Okay, let's do that again. I always find my slope first, just kind of, it helps me center. So this should be a positive slope, just like the last one, positive two over three. Here is my, uh, sorry, here's my x1, here is my y1. So here's x1 right next to the x, y1 next to the y. Hey Duke, bud, get up here, bud. Just be still, be still, mommy's filming. Sorry, y'all, it's my dog. Um, so when we plugged in a three to this equation, there was a negative sign written in front of it, which means that that point was originally three. And then when they plugged in the two, there was a negative sign in front of it. So the only way that that would turn into a positive is if you flip the sign. And so that's going to be three, negative two. It would have been three, y minus a negative two. I'm sorry, negative three. Oh, nope, negative two. I was right. Um, and that would turn into a positive. So it had to be a negative two that they originally put into this equation. Okay, so let's graph that. Right three down two is my original point. What is my slope? My slope is up two. So we're increasing, so it's rise of two, run of three. And so then I would just put a line through that. That is the graph of the um, equation that is going through the point two, negative three with a slope of, sorry, three, negative two with a slope of two thirds. Okay, now this one's tricky because they give you a point. They actually give you two points. So y'all, when you graph these, watch this. This is actually easier. Here's a point on the line, four, one. So right four, down one, no, up one. So there's one point. Here's another point, negative two, one. So you go uh, left two, up one. You can go ahead and graph that. Oh, look at this. Interesting. 
This is a flat line where both y values are one. We're gonna look at this a little bit more tomorrow, um, but when you found the slope of these two, watch what would happen. You would go one minus one over negative two minus four. What is one minus one? Zero. And so what is zero divided by anything? It's zero, so this slope should be zero. So this is the flat line. What's the equation of this line? We're gonna look at this more tomorrow, but since we're using point slope right now, um, I'll put this in point slope form. So y minus, here's my y1, here's my x1. So y minus one equals zero, which is my slope, times x minus four. Well, watch what happens when we do that, just as kind of like a foreshadow to tomorrow. This would end up, if you were to simplify this, this would be zero times x minus four. When you do zero times anything, you get zero. So y minus z, uh, one equals zero. So what is my equation? Y equals one. This is the line where every single y value is equal to one. We will look at that more tomorrow though. All right, this problem, let's go ahead and graph it. Three negative one is right three down one. Five negative six is right five down six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are my two points. Here's the graph. If they just wanted you to graph it, you'd be done. You've got two points. You're ready to graph it. Um, usually you have to find the slope to use the second point. But if you wanted to find the slope and use the equation, um, like we've been doing just for more practice, negative six minus negative one turns into a positive one. Five minus three, that turns into negative five over two. Let's check that slope. Down one, two, three, four, five, right two. So we just verified we did it right. Um, and so an equation of that line written in point slope form could be y minus negative one turns into a positive one equals the slope, which is negative five halves. We've already verified that times X minus three. So that's using that first point. But again, you can use either point or any point on the line. So there's a lot of variety in these. Why is this better uh, than slope intercept form? I don't know exactly where this crosses. I could use my slope to figure it out, um, but this is just a little bit easier. All right, now it says, given the equation in point slope form, what is the point and what is the slope? So we've already done something similar when we graphed. We had to use the same idea. What is my slope? My slope is going to be four, four over one. What is my point going to be? My point is here's my X one, here's my Y one, but we have to remember to flip the sign. So my X one, Y one is gonna be, instead of positive one, it's gonna be negative one. Instead of negative two, it's gonna be positive two. So there's my X one, there's my Y one. You have to remember to flip both signs. If the number you plugged in was originally negative, that's how that would turn into a positive. If the number you plugged in was positive, now it looks negative. Okay. This one looks tricky. There's my slope. There's the one half. So M is a positive slope of one half. Um, but then I go to get my X1 and it's not there. Well, what number shows that it's not there mathematically? That's going to be zero. So X, well, you can go minus zero. We know that that was there originally. And so that's going to be zero. And then it's going to be the opposite of negative three, which we know is going to be positive three. So there's my x1, y1, okay? And so this one's going to be flip the sign, negative two, negative one. What is my slope going to be? My slope is going to be five. So we're just looking here for the slope every time, looking at the opposite of x, the opposite of y in the equation to find my point, okay? So last but not least, um, we give you an example where there's a slope, there's m equals seven, my positive slope, they're not always positive. And then my um, x1 is here, so I'm gonna do the opposite of negative three, so that's gonna turn into a positive three. But when you go to get your y1, there's nothing written there. Well, what do we know mathematically that that's gonna represent? That's gonna represent zero. So this has a slope of seven, and it passes through the point three, zero. So your homework is on the back, your point slope form homework. Um, there are 15 questions, and it's very similar to the front side.